Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Thanks for stopping by. Leaving your ex behind in your past and moving on and not obsessing over your ex. First of all, it's fine to still love them. It's expected that you will still love somebody who you have been in love with previously. You know, sometimes people fall out of love over a long period of time. Something happens that's horrendous that can kill things rather instantly. But in a lot of cases, it just doesn't work out for some reason. So I think to start with, I just wanted to point out that that's okay to still have feelings, fond and warm feelings of love for someone. But if you're taking this beyond the normal, if it's occupying way too much headspace, that's something we've got to talk about. So how to stop obsessing over your ex? That's what's on the agenda today. Number one, distract yourself. And if you're going to do that, not a big fan of the to get over somebody, get under somebody else kind of mentality. I think whatever you do choose to use to distract yourself should be worthwhile. You want it to be something that will help you in the long term. You'll look back over this period of time and think to yourself, that was time well used. I made progress in something. So whether it's taking a class, learning something new, any type of self-improvement I think is the ideal choice. Of course, you can just go day after day plodding through and fighting those thoughts that enter your mind, but it's a lot easier to get through if you have a legitimate, useful, and worthwhile distraction. Number two, similar but not the same, redirect your attention. Every time you notice that that's where your mind is going, think of something else. I know it's uh, hard in the moment here to think of something else you'd think about, but it's very much like distracting a toddler from danger. You see their little brains working and you know they're heading towards, I don't know, the outlet, <laughs> the wall. And instead of yelling no, which you could choose to do all day long, both to a toddler and yourself with thoughts of your ex coming into your head. I think it's easier to maybe have something planned that you are going to use to distract yourself. Maybe know that every time your mind goes in that direction, you're going to think about, I don't know, something that's important to you. Or maybe not, maybe it's just immediately think about your grocery list. It doesn't matter whether it's planned or in the moment, but have that instinct, develop that instinct to immediately drag your mind elsewhere. And number three, a rule to remember, I should have probably mentioned this first, is no stalking your ex. No driving by their work or driving by their house, seeing what they're doing on the weekend if you get wind of where they might be checking out their friends' houses to see if perhaps their car is there or anything of that nature. That is not only wrong, really, really bad for you, a waste of your time, but it's against the law. That's right, it's illegal. In fact, you know the best advice to prevent this, cut ties altogether. No stalking and completely cutting ties because why? Why are you going to continue to see this person in any capacity? Oh, we could be just friends. No, obviously, if your brain is going towards obsessive thoughts, you're looking at this video at all, you're not a person who can be friends with this person. So why torture yourself like that? For a lot of people, it's just a really bad idea. And you know what? You don't need another friend, not one like that. Number four, stop fantasizing. Stop romanticizing your time with this person. Yes, there were good times, but there were also bad times or you would still be together. Focus in on those. That is where, when you are starting to get a little melancholy and thinking of all the things you miss, immediately drag your brain, and this is like meditation, dragging your brain from one thing to a place of neutrality. It's more important in this situation that you take your brain and you go to the bad things. I know we don't wanna remember the parts that we were involved in in something that was negative, but it really is long-term in your best interest because it's a short-term solution to this problem. In fact, write down the things that were bad, the things that didn't work, the things you didn't like about them. And when your brain starts to go there, get this list out, read through it. Remember all the reasons that you're not supposed to be with that person, why they are not in fact your person. Number five, 
make peace with your past. A little self-analysis will go really far. It's a great opportunity to look at your attachment style, at the way that you handle relationships and breakups of relationships. How do you handle rejection? Is this something of a possessive part of your personality that's causing you to obsess about this person? Look back and go over the history of other relationships you've had, how they've ended, and see if there's any patterns. If you're not learning on your own how to not only move forward, but move forward in a really healthy way to connect with somebody next time, you know, there's therapy, right? You know I'm a big fan. Number six, if they were the person who broke up with you, this is gonna be easy. I assure you, it really is. You will look back and go, that was really a weird little stage because it's been very easy to move on. And the reason it is so is for the same reason I've been telling my kids since they first started dating in high school, which is if somebody doesn't want to be with you, what is the interest you have in that person? A challenge would be the only reason that makes sense. I want somebody who doesn't want me. And how healthy is that? Anybody recognizes in themselves that that's an unhealthy attitude to want things you can't have or things that aren't good for you. We all want someone who sees us for who we truly are and really connects with all the great things about us. Someone who's appreciative and feels lucky to have us by their side and lucky to be able to spend time with us because they treasure us. Somebody who doesn't treasure you, again, not your person. So move on, let them find somebody who they connect with so that you can do the same. Move on and find somebody who deserves you. And I think the important part in this one is take the time to think this through and learn to believe it. And if that requires therapy, great. If you can do it on your own, great. Takes a little self-evaluation, some self-assessment. But when you realize that you're not for everyone, everyone's not for you, I have the wrong coffee cup today. <laughs> Trust that you will find your person, but that wasn't it. And remember, not everyone is going to like you, which is easy to believe and understand when you look from your own perspective and realize that you don't like everyone that you meet either. Plenty of people you've gone on dates with or who have been attracted or had a crush on you, and you're like, yeah, not for me, not my type, not somebody I'm attracted to, not the same values or interests, whatever the reason, not everybody is meant for everybody else. And that makes rejection a lot easier to handle. Let it just slide off your back. I know that if you're obsessing over your ex, this isn't about somebody who you just dated casually. But as you get back out there, I want to remind you that in situations where it's not a romantic connection, to be grateful for figuring that out early in the dating process so that you don't end up back here two, three years from now with somebody that you've wasted even more time with and has kept you from connecting with somebody you will truly love and enjoy having as a partner. And before I let you go, I should mention that obsessive love is actually a disorder. So if this is something that is all day, every day, is really debilitating and keeping you from focusing on work or family commitments, you're not just sad at home and thinking about it or keeping yourself from driving past their office. If this is keeping you from fulfilling your responsibilities, you don't have to go it alone. There are people who will help you. There are counselors, therapists, doctors, people who, with whom you are connected in your religious organization, if you do that route, somebody at your school, if you're younger. A really, really smart and supportive friend is another great option. You don't have to go it alone. If this is really taking over your life in a way you feel isn't healthy, take control again, because you can. I hope you found that interesting or helpful. If you did, oh, look who's there. It's my little mama. She says, hey, give the episode a thumbs up. And I would appreciate that as well as you hitting that subscribe button, which is so important to the channel. Got to mention here too, if you're going to be putting yourself back out there, we're really pushing into the real world meeting of people. And I have a free guide that's available. Check it out from down in my description box. Gets emailed directly to yours and it's free. Absolutely. So I'll look forward to seeing you back here again soon. And until next time, have a good one.